So how's it going? Technology problems. Oh my gosh, technology. <laughs> I've had so many, it's been like a technology fail 24 hours for me. Ugh, lights, so frustrating. these studio lights weren't going, they were going on and off. The camera was on the fritz. I'm calling Sony. I mean, it's so just there's gremlins and everything. One thing after another, it's just insane. You it's know? Murphy's Law. It's this Murphy's is what Law, I get yeah. working with somebody whose nickname is Murphy. Exactly, right. <laughs> I should have exactly. known. You deserve it. Constant. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, you know, some people were um, have been asking us about the mouse story back when we did the podcast number oh, three. Oh my gosh. <laughs> about the Roth IRAs. You know, we, we kind of left them hanging. Like, you know, we had this mouse and they threw it out and, you know. Inquiring. So, minds want to know. Yeah, right. They want to know. Well, so okay, happened. everyone. So if you didn't hear the story, go back and listen to episode three about Roth plan basics. We had some excitement right before we got on the show. <laughs> I am very sad to report that Nikki <laughs> is deceased. <laughs> Oh, uh, we set a I'm trap before crushed. we came to do the show. And when we got back, um, he was in there. And so no more mice in my office. All has been well since then. Uh, and we laugh, but it is sad that, you know, he we'll do catch go. and release next time, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, he was in the can. I could have. Walked. It's a funny story. Go listen to it because I definitely could have easily walked him outside. Walked him outside yeah, and right. I chose to act insane instead. <laughs> you did the girl thing. So let's, let's call it. Let's call a spade a spade. Here, you know? uh, it's true. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, ladies. For sure. It's right. True. Right. We do it. So, uh, good, that story's wrapped up. For <laughs> what are we talking know. about today? You know, inflation. Inflation. Inflation, Super yeah. Super exciting yeah, topic. That's right, that's right. <laughs> um, well, let me tell you a story. Okay. So, there's this old lady. She's selling pretzels on the street in New York City for 25 cents a pretzel. And every day a young man passes by and drops a quarter in her cup, but he doesn't take a pretzel. This goes on for three years. Finally, one day, the man walks by, he drops a quarter in the cup, and the woman finally speaks to him and she says, it's 35 cents now. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid inflation, inflation joke. <laughs> inflation, well, I have one too, I have okay, one. Okay, let's hear Not yours. Not to be outdone. <laughs> so did you know that Apple is the most futuristic company out there? Why is that? They are so futuristic that they've already raised their prices to what they're gonna be 50 years from now. <laughs> They, back, they backed true. in inflation. Yep, That's there you like, go. All right, you win. That's way better than all mine. All right, okay, okay, okay. So, <laughs> jokes aside, yep. inflation, I think, is on everybody's mind right now. At least it is if you watch the news. Our clients are asking us a lot of questions about it. And yep, so, yep. so, we're going <laughs> to welcome <laughs> oh, yeah. to a live version of A Place of Possibility. I am Angela Wright. And I'm Richard Del Monte. We're really happy to have you here to our inaugural version. Our right? first it's, our, it's our maiden voyage. Our right? maiden live, live vo yeah, voyage. Yeah, yeah. Here we go. That's great. That's <laughs> for great. For better or worse. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So we're happy to have you here. Yeah. So our goal is not to turn you into, uh, you know, armchair economists, inflation experts. You know, we just want to teach you what it is that you need to know, sift through some of the garbage that's out there right now, um, and maybe have a few good lines to drop at your next cocktail party. Yeah. Make you look smarter. Yeah. That, that's a good goal. That's a good goal. Yeah. So why don't we define what inflation yeah. is define first it. before pe so people know. Yeah, so what, what really, you if you if you have to pay more for the very same thing now that you could have that you did buy or could have bought a year ago for less, that's inflation, right? Yeah. And conversely, deflation would be where you can you can buy something that's exactly the same as you could have bought before, but you pay less now. Yep. There you go, yeah. right? That's uh, in, a, in a nutshell. Yeah. We, we all understand that. Yeah. So like in the 1940s, a loaf of bread was 15 cents. Yeah, that's pretty wild, isn't it? You know, <laughs> it, it is. I mean, that's hard for people to relate to. Yeah, yeah. Not too many people are alive, you know, today that were that yeah, were yeah. alive in the 40s. But, you know, for people my age, it's a good opportunity. Of, of, it, of advanced age, yeah, you, you know, mean? Yeah, okay, right, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, they, I remember very clearly in the 60s, you know, growing up riding my Stingray bicycle and we could go buy a candy bar for a dime. A nickel. Yeah. We could get we go get those bottles, you know, the Coke bottle stuff that people throw in the fields and we get three cents, two Coke bottles would get us a candy bar. Oh and so a Coke was like a dime. Yeah. And a um, a loaf of bread was a quarter. And the same the same price existed for a gallon of gas. That's still true. They're both a quarter. What do you mean? A gallon of gas and a loaf of bread. They're Still both around the four dollars, right? That's <laughs> yeah. true, right, right? Unless you're gluten free, I just paid nine dollars for a loaf. Oh my like, gosh, that's, that's insane! That it's is all rice too. Why is it even that expensive? There's a supply and demand thing right there. Most yeah, exactly. too many people want it. There's not enough of it, so the price goes. Or up. I'm an idiot. Right. There you One go. of the two. No, no, no. It's not that. It's not that. <laughs> you're definitely not an idiot. Um, okay, so and also, what about houses? Oh, oh my yeah. gosh, people, oh, yeah. My parents bought their first house. 
um, I think in the early 50s for like $4,000. Yeah. My parents, I think in the 80s, 120,000 in yeah, the Bay Area. Yeah, yeah, well my first house, not my first house, the second house, I bought it in San Ramon, it was 235 and I thought, <laughs> a quarter of a million dollars, I'm gonna go bankrupt, you know? And I just looked on Zillow last night and it's a, it's a million you and a quarter. You still look that house up. I do, because I, I sold it and it's the worst thing I ever did. It's a million and a quarter now. Oh my gosh, you're The kidding. same house from 19, we bought <laughs> it in 1992, so 30 years. That's, that's inflation. inflation, right? There, that's a good good example yeah. of inflation. Yeah. Um, what about deflation? Okay, yeah. Examples? So that exists too. Clothing, for example, I can walk into H and M today and buy a T shirt for three dollars. You know, back when I was a child in the eighties, you even the discount department stores you couldn't get a T shirt for three dollars. Why is that? Shouldn't it cost more today if this whole inflation thing is real? Yeah, you would think. But what happened is that because uh, companies learned that they can ship jobs and manufacturing overseas to cheaper places like Vietnam. Mm -hmm. You know, that's one of the ones you always get clothes say made in Vietnam. Yep, totally. You know, in Thailand and these other places. That's how you, you can do it cheaper. So the because the labor and the cost of manufacturing are lower, that translates to lower prices. So we have our workers, you know, that were working in the textile industry mm -hmm. in the United States decimated. Um, yeah. but we all buy cheaper prices at yeah. Target and you know, cheaper yeah. clothes at Target and these other places, you know, H&M and all that. Bad for workers, yep. great for consumers. Yep, exactly. Yeah. exactly. So, we've, so we've established inflation goes up and it goes down. It goes yeah. both ways. It goes both ways. Like yeah. some friends we know. <laughs> Woo! <Just kidding>. Bada <laughs> boom! <laughs> just That's kidding, good. just kidding. I everyone. like that. Okay, so how do we track this thing? Like why we get these numbers all the time. What are they actually tracking? Is it the price of milk or? Um, there, there are indices that the government tracks, you know, they have to do something with the money that we pay them. And so <laughs> they track things like producer prices and real estate prices and healthcare costs and things like that. But the one that we mostly know about is the, the consumer price index or CPA, CPA, CPI. <laughs> And uh, that actually started in 1967 when inflation was kind of picking up. People go, we should, we should have an index to track this. And so it started out at 100, and tell us where it is right now. 800. 800, so that means the prices have gone up eight times since 1967. Yeah. Which That's a real that in all these bracer, examples. you know, to know. think about that, yeah. right? It hurts. Yeah. So you think about people that are retired, like maybe if you wanna live a long time and you retired in like the 60s or 70s, how much do you have to have to be able to buy the same things now, you, you, you could be decimated. I love the story you sure. always tell about your dad when he first retired, yeah. the car was equal to his monthly pension payment. And now of course a car is six yeah. times his yeah, monthly right, pension right. payment. Yeah, so you have to, well, this is a different story, but you but you need to factor inflation into your thinking when you're gonna retire for yeah. sure, because yeah. it's gonna be there. How and about, it varies, it varies wildly, right? Like through the years. Oh yeah. It's, it's been way up, it's been yep. way down, there's yep. been some yep. averages. Let's yep. walk through some of these numbers so you can get an idea of where we actually stand today versus- Okay, good, yeah. So yeah. the high point, the, the highest inflation we had in the United States was in 1946, and it was 18.1% in one year, <sighs> you know? Now that was, why Why was that happening? Because everybody was coming back from the war, they, everybody wanted to buy cars and all kinds of appliances and things mm -hmm. and spend money and there wasn't enough of it being made so prices yeah. went up. Yeah. I mean, it makes sense, right? Supply and demand. Yep. Um, now the low point was in 1914 and it was minus 15.8%. That would deflation. be deflation, big okay. time deflation. Um, now during, in the more modern era, the, 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 the highest inflation we've had in my, like in my lifetime, is that the modern era or maybe not? Right? <laughs> I um, think you might span both. Yeah. Just kidding, just kidding. 13.3%, uh, 1979 was the, was the high water mark. Yeah. Um, and the next few years were really rough. They were they? really bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll talk about that in a minute. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Um, okay, so on average, Three and a quarter percent. Three and a quarter percent. Yeah, going That's back to 1914, now. last hundred years plus, yeah. about three and a quarter percent, yeah. including all the highs and lows. Okay. Yeah, for sure. So, um, so yeah. then between 1978 and 1981, we see 50% the total cost of living increase, right? Like you yeah. were around during that time, I a 50% yeah. increase. Like, a 50% increase in your cost of living, that's- In three or four years? Huge. Yeah. What was that like? So like I wasn't, you know, I was a child during that time. We should have that. the music, like the the violins playing, you know, <laughs> or the, the little harp. Back in the day, when, when everything, when yeah, life but what, was- Yeah, what was life like? So, because life, I think people are, are, are a little wigged out right now, right? Yeah. Because especially me, I don't know what to expect in a time of high inflation. What okay. does that mean right. for me? So you were there, what yeah, was it like? Yeah, I mean, uh, in the sepia picture I'm gonna paint for you, um, <laughs> it was- We had color <laughs> photography, didn't we? But yeah, no, we, we lived in black and white, everything was black and white. Um, 
it was, uh, you know, the, the cost of living, like mortgages were 16%, money market rates at the bank, like I remember well, uh, Bank, of the Mer- bank of America having assigned 20% money market rates, you know, that was like normal, <laughs> okay, that's imagine? what it was. I didn't really know, it was early, early 20s, I didn't know any different. Yeah. And what really happened a lot was people were getting cost of living raises all the time because- Oh, really? Well, if you had a job, I had a union job at the time and I worked in a steel mill and we were getting raises every five minutes because inflation was so rampant that, it, you know, we had to keep getting raises, yeah. Did you feel as though your earnings kept up with it? I don't know. That that, but yeah. I felt like we were getting raises, and I, you know, I, I had to spend money on. I was a kid, you know. It was, <laughs> True, yeah. It wasn't much I was doing yeah. with it. So, so you weren't so, starving. I wasn't starving. Nobody was starving. Yeah. It was fine, you know. It was, it was, it was comfortable. You, you know, we, we, you adjust, you adjust to anything, yeah. you know, and it didn't feel horrible. I see. But the government didn't like it. I mean, we were trying to do it because it makes the cost of everything go up and makes people have less confidence in the future. Of course. So that that's the thing about it. You really want to have stable prices. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense for sure. Yeah, yeah. So um, this so kind of we've 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 captured some questions from clients. The big four that they want to know, and and we're also going to have time. So if you want to enter questions in for us after at the end, we're going to have time for that. So please type those in, and we'll get as many as we can. Um, so the, the first question is they want to know is what causes inflation? Mm-hmm. Um, what is hyperinflation yeah. and how much do we have to worry about that? Because yeah. we hear about that in the press. That's all right? I hear about in the news. Right. Why has inflation been so low in recent years? Yeah. Um, and um, and it, interestingly, it's been low. It's been like, uh, what, 2.35 Two, yeah. for the last yeah. 40 years? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, and, um, and why is the media banging the drum for hyperinflation? Ad space. <laughs> Ad oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say that? Sorry. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, we will t- we will talk more about and the how media. worried should we be? Yeah, right? exactly. Okay, exactly. So, okay. what causes inflation? Yeah. So, um, at its simplest level, inflation is a function of supply and demand. The more uh, people want an item, let's say an apple, for example, the more they're willing to pay for that apple, right? You want the apple and I want the apple and our friend has an apple and I'm gonna say, well, I'll give you two more dollars for that apple. I don't want Richard having it. And he's gonna say, well, I'll give you four more dollars. So on and so forth, this happens all across our economy everywhere and prices rise over time. Right, right, that's right. And you see that right now, especially in California, I don't know about other states, but I I know it's happening in Texas too with housing, Mm -hmm. right? You wanna buy a house right now? You're probably gonna have to offer a couple hundred thousand more for it. And it had better be cash. And it better be cash and you better close in a week, Uh, right? We're not taking, we're not messing with you. Yeah, yeah, that's that's supply and demand right, in right, housing right. right now, and that's where you see inflation. Though that's one of the things that's driving it. Mm-hmm. Yep. Everybody wants it; it's in limited supply. We're also so seeing inflation. this with microchips right now. Yep. So shortage in manufacturing due to plants being closed down thanks to the pandemic. Uh, shipping issues also happening. And so microchips are interesting. This is, I think, the first time we've had a shortage of microchips and they're in everything. Did you know there's like a hundred of them in your car? That's amazing. Uh, yeah, so car manufacturing is slowing down. Obviously cell phones, they're in your refrigerator, your washing machine. Like, a lot of things are, prices are going to rise because there just isn't enough supply thanks to the shortage of microchips. Right, inflation. right, right. So then you have these prices going up. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's, that's basically how inflation works, right. Yeah. So things get a little more complicated when the government oh, gets surprise. involved, right? Yeah, right, what a surprise, right? <laughs> so, and it does, and it does something to, what, what the government tries to do to be able to manage inflation or to solve problems, like, like the COVID crisis, mm-hmm. is they will either inject more money into the, into the system, which would you know, have more money that people can spend, or they take it back yeah. when they want to slow things down. So, if they, so they basically are managing to a, um, you know, a very narrow band of inflation, right? Like 2% is what they, 2% their target is. 2% is the Fed target. Right, that's what they're trying to get. We're not trying to get to zero. That's never the goal here. Some yeah. inflation means healthy growth in your economy. It's right, a good thing. Right, You need to have growth. Deflation is a bad thing. Yeah. It's really, that's when you, Japan has deflation. Some of these other countries have deflation. And it become it becomes a... You know, a a vicious cycle that's really bad. You want to have a virtuous cycle of a little bit of inflation. People still feel like everything's relatively stable, but it's it's getting a little more expensive as time goes on. Yeah. So the government's doing that behind the scenes, and so but they can make things a little messy in terms of inflation. So recently they. You know, they did all the stimulus, right? So we've right? had all the stimulus. We've right. had two payments. We've had additional yeah. unemployment. We've had PPP loans. Getting right. access to cash is a lot easier right. now. Right, right. And it's I still agree. paying. I mean, people are still, you know, riding on the coattails of 600 a week extra. Yeah. And, or, you know, I got more unemployment. I don't need to go to work. Yeah. Right. So it's causing that those kinds of problems. A lack of 
workers mm -hmm. ter equates to higher wages. They're paying they're paying people that at um, fast food places yeah. fifteen dollars an hour to go to work there now. Yeah. you know, I which mean, is incredible, right? We're hiring, and I see that here. Yeah. Wage, you know, it's ten yeah. grand more than it was last year. Is it okay? Darn yeah, it. sorry. Okay. I didn't <laughs> also, hear we're that. hiring. <laughs> yeah. No, it's good. We like to pay. It's okay. Yeah. So, but, so this is what's happening right now, where we've got the the government injecting all of this money in into the economy, and so naturally people are worried. They're going. Yikes, right. everybody has all this money. We're already seeing us clamoring for goods. Right. Um, and yikes, are we headed towards some sort of inflation problem? Right. I think what we have to do is um, is distinguish situational uh, inflation from systemic inflation, yes. right? Yes, and absolutely. So, and so you really want to look at like, so what? what's really happening? I mean, we're getting ahead of ourselves a little bit, but what's <laughs> what's really happening because of COVID yeah. So like the lumber prices, right? Did we talk about lumber already? Yeah, so lumber prices is, yeah. this is really interesting. You have this convergence of things going on. We still have the manufacturing issues because you can't get people into the plants to manufacture. Right. You can't right. get the distribution. There's not enough truck drivers. You know, also the unemployment, people don't want to work. There's a lot of factors coming into this issue with lumber, right. but you can't buy lumber here in California, or you can, but you're going to pay a pretty penny yeah. for it. Yeah, and it was even worse like in the, you know, up until like June. Yeah, and so what happens Super in June? Expensive. So this is how, this is why we're not, completely in a panic right now because what happens when it goes up 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 people go ah, i don't really want it that bad yeah so they have less people exactly. buy it this right. happened to me with lumber i wanted to do some remodeling in my home and we got all these contractors coming in first of all their rates are through the roof because yeah, they, they can't so it's because they're in high demand we got plenty of work and then the lumber every is still also very expensive and so you know what we said I can wait a year. Yeah, I'll just right. wait this out, and a, and so that happens on a massive scale, and then things equalize. Right, right. And, and then the lumber companies also saw that there was this massive run on lumber. They ramped up their production. That yeah, takes a couple of months to equalize, but yeah. eventually you get there. Yep. Yep. And we had the same thing with gasoline in the summer. Right? We were yes. actually, our newsletter, we were thinking there might be some gas shortages <laughs> yeah. in the summer because it was like everybody is getting turned loose. For their, you know, we thought at the time COVID was over and we're all going to be out there with no masks and driving around and, you know, for the first time and going everywhere. Yeah. And there was going to be a shortage of gas. And, the, mm -hmm. and, they, and the, the refineries hadn't been making as much gas because they've been, you know, they people didn't, are at people home didn't need not it. commuting and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. So there was an imbalance of, of gas. And what ended up happening was the prices in Cal and then California, they're up to five dollars a gallon almost. I and paid so over five dollars a gallon. You did? Mm -hmm. I mean that breaks my Premium, heart. Premium. But that yeah. breaks my heart. But you know, it's so it's um if the prices go up, then fewer people, well, maybe we'll make yeah. that trip next year when it's three dollars. You know, yeah. that's what happens. So it's people just self-select and the and the mm -hmm. problem solves itself. Yeah. So that's what, those if the, are, what if the Fed like just prints too much money? Yeah, that's, talk about that. You know, the whole idea. What were they, like, the, the, people have the idea of it's like a printing press or just running and printing all money out of just out of thin air. Yeah, I actually, know? I had a client. Like, is there a printing, like are actual dollar bills getting put out? And and I think there is this idea that it's printed and then like dropped from a hot air balloon on yeah. society or right, something. Right, that's it how doesn't we do work, it. It doesn't exactly work like that. It's more like um, the Fed is, um, is, is loaning money out uh, to, to banks and it's purchasing T-bills from the government. So right. it's not, it's in, infusing money by giving the government money by purchasing the T-bills, but there's no actual like dollar bills just floating around out there. And there's a debt associated right. with that. Right. Yeah, so there's there's a there's a uh, they can't just print into credit. the cows come home like nothing's yeah. happening. <laughs> if the government just gives money away like for six hundred dollars a month or PPP or whatever six hundred dollars a week for unemployment. There's a there's a corresponding debt on that that they that they exactly. have to pay back at some point. Yeah, so it's not just printing that would be inflationary. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah and it could and it could cause hyperinflation, which is what everybody is. You know, that's what's on all of the news headlines right now, uh, and it's very sensational. You you know. Yep. <laughs> You can get some great images of bread lines. And Are things. we going to have hyperinflation? Oh my gosh! Yeah, here in the country. Okay, so so here in the United States, we define hyperinflation as inflation of ten percent or more. Worldwide, it's like we have zero tolerance for inflation. Clearly, yeah. here worldwide, it's more like a thousand percent that they. But still, a ten percent would be painful for us for sure. here in the United right, States. Right. Right. And you know, like so, if you think about Venezuela right now, their yeah. inflation rate is twenty three hundred percent. Yeah. Which Sounds awful, and it is awful. I mean, the, the experience on the ground is terrible. But some of the worst inflation ever was, and again, you get into my age bracket, we were taught in school about the pre-World War II Germany and the Weimar Republic, and they had um, uh, uh, Reich marks that were, uh, let's see, you in five years, the price of a 
of a loaf of bread went from a quarter of a Reich mark to 80, I'm not kidding, this is not a typo, 80 billion <laughs> Reich marks to, to get a loaf of bread in five years. That's, That's uh, incredible inflation. That's Can you ridiculous. imagine? The currency was so worthless that they, that it was worth more as kindling for fires than it was for Are money. You serious? I'm dead serious. That's absurd. That's right. Yeah. That is totally yeah. absurd. Yeah. So that's that's getting inflation out. You know. Okay. Out so of hand. like, is this where we're headed here in the U.S.? Well, no, <laughs> absolutely not. Um, nobody. There's no rational expectation anywhere for any kind of inflation at that level. We yeah. do have situational inflation because of COVID, mm -hmm. which we've explained. Im yeah. Imbalances, basically, mm -hmm. between supply and demand that drives prices up. Yeah. Um, but what is it that you know that everybody listening doesn't know? Like, how can you be so confident? In that? Oh, OK. So the the what you want to do is follow the bond markets. The bond so the, the okay. trade <laughs> <Tell us, laughs> you didn't know bond. You know, no. but the secret is the bond market, <laughs> you know, but the 10 year Treasury right now is yielding one point three percent. OK, so that means that people and there's people buying the trade. There's trillions of dollars in treasuries that are held out there. Mm -hmm. So investors, it. let's define. So a 10 year Treasury means you're not getting your principal back for 10 years. Right. And in the meantime, you get a you get a level of interest mm -hmm. guaranteed by the government, by the U.S. government. So that so people are saying, well, I'll take that trade. I will take I will earn one point three percent, and I think I'm going to get a reasonable uh, return. So that means implicit in that they're not expecting to have hyperinflation. If you thought inflation was going to be five, six, seven percent, ten percent, you would never in a million years accept one point three percent yield. Yeah. The, these investors, these investors who are not talking heads, talking head talk is cheap. These talking heads, whatever you know, you can have Jim Cramer. <laughs> Here we are know, being the talking things. heads. Yeah, right. But you know, hey, pot. <laughs> you have to. You can listen to us. Um, but you know, the, a lot of the talking heads that are that are preaching gloom and doom and you know all these horrible things, they they don't have skin in the game like the like the bond market investors yeah. do. Yeah. And the thirty year Treasury. That's even a longer uh, example of what people mm -hmm. are are thinking. Um, that's yielding one point nine percent. Yeah. Let's call it two. So that means that you're you're investing money for 30 years. You know, that's you don't want to put it in for 30 years and think I'm not going to get it back and I'm going to lose money big time for the next 30 years. Because I think we should define and I see a question that's speaking to this a little bit. It's like interest rates and inflation are correlated. Right. Right. Yeah. So of course. they are tied together. Yeah. So not everybody knows. Not everybody okay, understands yeah, that point. relationship. Yeah. Right. There, right. Right. So as inflation is increasing, the Fed will increase interest rates. They don't increase on their own. The, the Fed sets our interest rate. Yeah. For the short term rate. The short term rate. Right. Yeah. Right. There's some supply and demand that the happens overnight with rate. other rates. Right. Yeah. The rate that banks charge each other to loan money overnight to keep their balance sheets good. Yeah. The Fed does set that. And it was 18% in what was the year? 1981? 80 or something. Now you're testing us. But lately it's been a quarter of a percent. So you can see the big range, right? Yeah. Um, so the Fed controls that. That's one of their tools they use to to, to manage the economy and the, and infl the inflation rate. You know, yeah. they have a lot of tools that they have a lot of arrows in their quiver that they use and they have done a phenomenal job. They right? have, yeah. They I mean, it's pretty clear that even though we're seeing it's about 5% inflation today. Right now, right, right month now. by month, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that it is situational and the Fed is using their tools because they've kept interest rates so low for us. They're right. continuing to pump money into the economy. We right. still need it, clearly, right. as the pandemic is off and on or wherever we are. Right. Um, yeah, and the Fed is... is is looking beyond the five percent thing. If they were thinking, "Oh my gosh, it's five percent now," we gotta crank, we gotta stop this because yeah. their band is like two. So they're they're looking at it like it's situational. And everybody's like, "Hey, Fed, you're not being aggressive enough." Mm -hmm. And then you know, it's possible that's true, but I don't think so. I think the Fed knows what they're doing. Well, I think we had a pretty good opportunity for a run up in inflation in the late '90s. You yeah. have a ton of money infused into our economy all of a sudden with the technological revolution happening. Yep. Um, all of the dot com millionaires. The federal policy at that time, I think, saved us from inflation. It, yeah. it was we were primed for it, and the policies were in place. Yep. And for forty years, they've managed this to two to three percent. Yeah, it's been they've done a, they they know what they're doing. I think they've yeah. learned. Yeah, that we have these tools. Like you know, it's like uh, oh. Instead of waiting for a hurricane to show up, we have satellites now. We can see what's happening. We, we have <laughs> exactly. a worthy warning system, right? Yeah. But in the 40s, they didn't know that was the, the thing just showed yeah. up and killed a bunch of people. Yeah. So we have tools now, technology that helps us to, um, you know, manage the economy and manage inflation and keep it within a band. Yeah. So the Fed's not worried about, you know, um, 
uh, systemic inflation. Right. They're starting to get a little like, you know, but I think it's because they think the economy is heating up a little too yeah. much. Not because, you know, gasoline is really high right yeah, now yeah. or, you know, chips are, are high. And it stands to reason that our economy would heat up after it cooled all the way off with COVID. Exactly. I mean, this is all exactly what right. you would expect to see happening going right. forward. It's a mirror image of what, what totally. we saw. Right. And it's not right. just Fed policy that's keeping inflation at bay. There are other factors too. Right. Right. Like right. you have the internet. How does the internet keep inflation at bay. The internet has really been something, it's, it's sort of like the, the latest version of the um, industrial revolution. So mm -hmm. we had the agrarian economy in the in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. And then we had all this, you know, steam and, and gasoline engine stuff where they could do farming, you know, and all the machinery and the factories and everything. It changed the economy completely, made us way more productive. Mm -hmm. And the internet has done the exact same thing. We can do some, just imagine. But for example, just in my own, our own company, uh, 20 years ago, we had seven or eight people working in the firm to do what three people can or four people can do now. That's true. You know, and it's just because of, We're of so much productivity, more right? Technology. And you, can, and you like, again, this is the downside, the, the seamy underbelly of it, that you can ship jobs overseas and, um, and, you know, and do them for cheaper. Yeah. So as long as that isn't, you know, is, is, is in play, then it's going to keep a lid on wages. Yeah. But we're seeing wages spike because there's no workers we need. You can't ship a job to India if you're going to be, um, you know, a fast food job. Yeah. In McDonald's. No. They, they, the Indians can't do that. Right. So those jobs are going up in, in value. Yeah. You were going to talk that about the, the accountants, right? Well, yeah, I think As accountants are a good example of this because and even us to some, you know, financial advisors and investment portfolio managers to an extent, there are people who are in countries with low cost of living, but good education. India is a good example of this. We always talk about poor India. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you've got a highly educated population that has a low cost of living and are willing to do these jobs and something like preparing a tax return. I don't need to sit across from you to do that. Right. Um, and so because there are, you know, if we got too expensive, all of a sudden people would start looking around and right. say, okay, where can I get this cheap? I don't want to pay that rate. Right. And so it's keeping our rates low because we know that you could run off and get someone else to manage your portfolio in right. another country. Right. Um, and this is happening in a lot of industries here. And that keeps, that keeps a lid on inflation. Keeping wage down right. keeps the lid on inflation right. because we don't have the money to spend. Right, exactly. Yeah. Again, it's just supply and demand. Yeah. Um, okay, so you want to keep a, pay attention to bonds. Um, we talked about Fed policy. Yeah. So overall, we think the inflation, the, you know, the opportunity for hyperinflation. It's, it's it's not as ripe low. as the media would have you believing. Right. Um, right. uh, it's it's pretty muted once we get all of the sectors of the economy up and running again. So I think we will see little spikes as we get access to sure. things we didn't have before. Yeah, or right. You know, things play out. But inflation is always a thing, right, that investors have to be paying attention to, because while we're saying it's natural and healthy for the economy, it also erodes the purchasing power of your money. So it if does. you stick your money under the, your mattress, you're losing two to 3% per year. Right, so right. we thought we called together a list of eight assets that you can invest in that will protect you from inflation. Right. Um, okay. So the first one I'm going to let you say, cause it's your favorite. Owning real estate. <laughs> real estate. What a surprise. You think I'm, I'm big on that. Uh, and the reason is because you, you, you can raise your rents to offset inflation. Yeah. And the value of the home, because it has a lot of commodities in the home and land and there's timber, there's wood, there's, you know, concrete, there's all these different things. Because those all go up in value, that makes the house go up in value also. So it's a good inflation hedge over time. Yes. And as you've seen, $10,000 houses in the 50s to a million plus that's a, that's a good inflation hedge. Definitely. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Number two is commodities. Commodities are physical items with inherent value. So think about uh, grains, sugar, copper, and other metals. Uh, coffee, natural gas, lumber. Um, there's a whole market for those things. Now, individual investors are not going to go out and buy a, a bushel ship. of grain, yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> but you can right. invest in commodities through mutual funds and exchange traded funds. And right. it's a great hedge against inflation. Yeah, it, it has been historically for sure. Uh, gold and precious metals is the next one. Oh, um, gold. <laughs> you know, they, they, they typically have been seen as an inflation hedge um, because if, if, the, if the dollar goes down in value and purchasing power, then the, the gold will keep that value. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
I'm going to put an asterisk next to this one yeah. because gold and silver are very hot right now. Everybody, you know, you thought you're so brilliant. You heard inflation was coming. So you ran to gold is what you're supposed to do, except it already happened. So if you're listening to this now, <laughs> the prices of gold and silver have spiked tremendously. Yeah. And, it, you know, you might not get any gains there as of now. Right. If you're already there, great. You've got a little bit of a hedge. And there's also uh, how do you own it? Yeah. So you can buy actual gold bars, oh, man. which presents some risk in terms like theft risk liquidity risk um you know if they're under your mattress you have to turn that into money somehow yeah um and then so you could own it through there's all these outfits online where you can buy partials or whatever there's also vaulted which i'm not recommending i've never used it but i am telling you it exists yeah yeah but i mean the you the the, when you when you own it and physically like that there's always going to be the intermediary that's going to get as is vig yeah. on the on the thing so you know you don't know how much vig they're going to get from you when they when you want to buy it or sell it <laughs> suddenly so in the that. exchange there, there's you know, some sort of spread on it yeah. of three percent and in, 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 in return for that in, you know in, uh, as an opposition for that you could buy a uh, exchange traded fund for free that yeah. tracks the, the value of gold yeah. every day yeah or totally. silver or whatever you want yeah yeah good point yeah so i mean it's i i like that's what you want to do. We we have we have a little bit of gold and precious metals in our portfolios yeah. as a hedge. Yeah. Um, but you know we we do them in the forms of ETFs. Yeah. Exchange traded funds for sure. Yeah. Okay, so this is an interesting mm-hmm. one, but it's proven to be true. Investment grade art. So I'm talking about like Picasso's and the Mona Lisa, not you know your neighbor's beautiful yeah. painting, which I'm sure is amazing. Um, but <laughs> it, art. The one your wife not, did. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's right. fabulous. Um, art doesn't lose value in inflationary periods, mm-hmm. and so you you know most of us are not going to go out and buy a Picasso. If you're interested in, in uh, investing in art, Masterworks allows you to buy port like timeshares of pieces of art. You don't get the art in your home, obviously. That's dangerous, but. Right. Um, um, you can own a portion of art if you want. Right, right. And but you know that again, it, there's a it's a very illiquid market, and there's you have to have a lot of expertise. Someone could sell you something. Oh, this is a a masterwork, you know, Vermeer or something. You don't even you wouldn't know. Yeah. So you could just get you could get your clock cleaned really easily with that. Great. Yeah. And the intermediaries too. You have to remember those guys. <laughs> Tips: Treasury inflation protected securities. Yeah. Those are issued by the U.S. government, and they basically give you a return of which is very, usually very low. Right now it's zero plus whatever inflation is. So if inflation is 10%, you're going to make 10% on these treasury bonds that are adjusted, yeah. adjusted for inflation. They're government-backed so, bonds? That yeah, they're government guaranteed and they, they, they mature in somewhere up to, you know, what, many years. Yeah. And they, they, can, they can protect you. They provide a hedge against inflation. Yep. With no risk. Number six, yep. growth stocks. This probably should have been number one. They, I mean, the inflation is the whole reason we bother investing yeah. in stocks in the first place. Like it's fun, but it's, you know, <laughs> we do it for inflation. So yeah, growth stocks. When you know, think about it. If people are out buying stuff and corporations are making a whole bunch of money, stock prices are going up. So it's yep. it's, it's right. that's how you hedge against inflation. It's one of the easiest ways to do it right. and, and most accessible. And what keeps stock prices, you know, in the in the game is the fact that they can charge more for their products and services. Right as inflation goes up, that's a, that's the benefit. And the dividends will typically go up. So that, yeah. that supports the valuation of, of stocks for, okay. for in, in, a, in an economy. Crypto. Number seven, I have, crypto. To include, I have to include cryptocurrency here. So I'm talking about things like Bitcoin. Um, so currency is traditionally a hedge against inflation. Bitcoin is a currency, technically. Theoretically. <laughs> Theoretically, it's a yeah. currency. So it stands to reason in theory, that um, cryptocurrency would be a hedge against inflation. Now, the, my the caveat here is that we haven't seen this play out yet. So we really don't know and what will never. happen. <laughs> I mean, I hope yeah. not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I don't want to learn how hyperinflation impacts cryptocurrency, but it it's in theory, it would be a hedge, which yeah. is why it's on this list. Yeah. It's kind of the new gold and precious metals. That That's what some people think. Yeah. I don't happen to, you know, subscribe to that. I'm, I think the jury's way out. We have a long time to see what happens with that. Great. Uh, converting debt that you, so not debt that you owe, but if you're a lender, um, converting the debt that you have that's fixed fixed rate, like 3%, you're loaning it to people, to variable rates. So in other words, you're going to charge an interest rate that's tied to 
uh, an index like inflation or the, you know, the cost of yeah. funds or the, you know, the LIBOR or something like that. Right. Um, that way you, you, you can get a higher rate of return if inflation comes back. Yes. You don't want to be borrowing under those terms. No you way. like borrowing at a fixed rate of 3% on your mortgage. Anybody that's got a four five, 6% mortgage, please refinance that yeah, right now that at these low rates because, you know, you never know what's going to happen. And if you happen to be in a, any kind of variable rate loan, see if you can fix it today, uh, right yeah. now. Yep. Don't wait any longer. <laughs> For sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and by the way, if you're a DMG client and you're listening to this, you already own six of the eight things in your investment portfolio that we mentioned here. Right. And like I said, right. you have to be in these things prior to the inflation happening. Once it starts happening, everybody knows this. Uh, and in fact, this list is going to be on the internet in our Know Your Possibilities guide, yep. which we'll post uh, along with the show. So yep. like everyone knows this and they're all going to run there when it happens. So you need to position yourself today for future inflation. Don't wait. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And we might even have more than six, Mike, because we, we do have variable rate uh, mortgage that's loans true. and stuff inside yeah. of our bond portfolios. Yeah. All right. So that's a lot about inflation. More than you ever <laughs> wanted to know. Do we have do we have any questions from the audience? Yep. We have a couple of questions. Okay. okay so um, are gas spikes uh, situational or are those systemics, the gasoline that we're seeing? Uh, okay. We good talk question. about it going from, you know, yeah. 50 cents to $5. Yeah. That's an interesting question because I would mostly think it was just, it was a situational because of the, the you know, everybody mm -hmm. wanting to travel at the same time. Yeah. And, but also it could be systemic because, um, uh, you know, the government is really trying to encourage people to not to get off the gas, you know, gasoline and oil. Uh, so they're trying to put the squeeze play mm -hmm. on and force people into going into battery, you know, yeah. uh, electric cars and e vehicles and things like that. So that's something that could become more systemic as they put the squeeze on. But I think it would flip at some point when more people are actually have electric cars, then then they'll be like, hey, wait a minute, we we want to keep the refineries going. So we're going to lower the price. Right. So that <laughs> yeah. could go the other way. That's a really interesting easily. way. Yeah. It's a little yeah. bit of both. Yeah. Could be right. Cool. Okay. Yep. What's big? Someone says, "What's big?" Oh, big! <laughs> it's uh, for us it's, young people who sorry, don't use that it's word. It's the grease between. Uh, it's vigorish. Is what it's. It's, it's a. <laughs> you got to be Italian to know that. I guess you know. It's a, you got to be like you know the, the Godfather era kind of thing. It, but it's like you know you want me to do something for you. I got to get a little something for that. You know. So yeah. Thank you. That's what big is. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm reading the question. Sorry, I, it's time for reading glasses for me. I hit 40. <laughs> Here we go. It, are the government policies sustainable or are they going to cause hyperinflation? Yeah. So the government has been pumping tons of money into society, as we talked about. Yep. It, how long can we do this before we have a problem? What do you think? That's a really good question. And, you know, I, I don't have the answer, but um, you'll... The, the, it'll be like a canary in the mine shaft kind of a situation. So you'll start seeing the bond bond interest rates go up. If we start, for example, if we're borrowing three, four million dollar, four billion trillion dollars a year. Sorry, I'm dating myself. Um, four trillion dollars a year more than what we're taking in, and we're doing that year after year after year, and the debt goes from the like thirty million, thirty billion, thirty trillion to forty trillion to fifty trillion. Um, you would start seeing the government, I mean, the government bond market to start showing signs of like, ooh, we're not sure these people can actually pay us back ever. Mm -hmm. um, kind of what happened to Greece and some of these other places mm -hmm. in, in, in Europe a few years ago. And so I think, you know, we're, we're not near that yet because the market is, I mean, we borrowed more than we've ever in the last 10 years. Mm -hmm. And I think we more than doubled our debt, maybe tripled it. And the bond market is at the lowest rates we've ever seen. So I think people have faith that we have more capacity um, than we probably give ourselves credit for mm -hmm. to uh, to uh, for borrowing. And so I think, you know, yeah, I think long term, you, you know, you, any household cannot borrow forever. Yeah. Right. No. But um, but, you know, honestly, the, the government, if they if they let inflation kind of eats away, if you pay back in the future at discounted dollars or you know deflated dollars. Yeah. You can do that for a long time. That's what we did in World War II, believe it or not. We borrowed a bunch of money to, to fund the war, and then we paid it back cause, uh, with inflated dollars. So it was a lot easier it's to pay more back. for us. Yeah. 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 I think it's also important to note that we often will wake up in the morning and the stock market's crashing. It's not like that not with inflation. Often, sometimes. Okay. Yeah. No. Five <laughs> times in the last 30 years. Right, in fact, right. we, we yeah. went and looked it up. So, yeah. so that it happens quickly. It's not like that with inflation. You don't fall off a cliff one morning. Is you, there are signs and it goes kind of slowly. It's, right. It's, you know, like um, you were talking about in post war Germany, it happened over a five year period. Right. It wasn't overnight. Right. And I think right. people would do well to right. remember that. Right. I, I think that if we if we end up getting into a situation where bond rates are starting to go up, 
um, that we would respond. I think the America, it's, it's said about Americans that we uh, we are terrible dealing with the uh, the um, um, termites in the basement, yeah. but we're great when the wolf is at the door. <laughs> That's true. And so I think it's going to have to become a wolf at the door situation yeah, where we actually respond to it. Uh, kind of like the, what they're doing with, you know, with uh, climate change. Yeah. It, at some point, we, we all. I mean, the national that. debt has been a topic of conversation for a long yeah. time. Like, yeah. This is not new. I remember sitting at a conference, a Charles Schwab conference, probably eight years ago. And it, the, there, there's this bipartisan organization called Fix the Debt. You can, they're great. You can look them up. They have been concerned about this for a very long time. And yep. and they have been, you know, the termites and the, like slowly looking at those while the rest of us are like, you're annoying. Be quiet. We don't want to yeah. talk about government yeah, debt. Yeah. Um, but there are, you know, they're looking at this and there are, there are plans in place. And again, yeah. Fed policy will come into play as this starts to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully we'll be able, we'll start at least getting to a balanced budget. Um, yeah. You know, that would be nice, uh, you know, we'll as a starting point. But, <laughs> but again, the, what I, the, the basic message I want to pass on is we've got a lot of capacity to, to continue to do what we're doing. And there's, at least at this point, there's not a lot of pressure to, um, to reverse that and yeah. it, it's not causing inflation yet. And so there's not really a, a disaster looming, you know, soon in the, around the corner next year. There's just not. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 20, 20 years, maybe, you know, but hopefully we'll, we'll, we'll be more responsible. Yeah. Should we keep, we have more questions. Should we keep going? We have uh, a little bit let's of, let's see how much time, a we, little bit of time. Okay. Maybe one more question. Okay. One more question. Uh, with the cost of homes, lumber, manufacturing so high, is it smarter to wait to purchase real estate than to buy uh -huh. when the market is at a high? What are the benefits to purchasing now? Good question. Yeah. Tricky question. What do you think? We don't have an easy answer. Yeah. I don't think. It's hard. Yeah. I will put one dash in the pro real estate column right now, and that is with interest rates so low. I mean, you can borrow for next to nothing. And so when you think about over a 30 year mortgage, the difference on your overall capital expenditure when you purchase that real estate is much lower. Even if you're paying, you know, 30 grand more for the house, I, I mean, a couple of percentage points over a 30 year mortgage is a huge difference. So there's right. one point in the pro real estate column. Right, right. What do you have in the con? I'll give you another point yeah. pro real estate. Okay. I, I think. Oh, we were going to always answer this question. Pretty well, I, I think the only way you can do this and have your sanity is to is to be looking long term. You have to if you're going to buy a house right now, you have to be able to believe that in 10 years, 15 years is going to be more expensive mm -hmm. to own. Because what happens in the next year or two years, we could we could easily have. I'm not predicting a crash. Those are very rare. But, you know, a softening where the market goes down 10 percent and people are more picky and they're not you know ra racing to buy your house and give you more money and yeah. stuff. Sure, that could happen, you know, and it probably will happen. Um, but if you wait for that, you know, you, the market might go up another 30% before it goes down 10. And so you're, you're missing out. And, and like you said, you miss out on the lower interest rates. Mm -hmm. So if you're going to buy right now, the only way it makes sense is if you think I'm going to be here for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, and I'll make money over the long run. And that, yeah. that way you can, you can sleep at night and be okay with it. I wouldn't f try to flip a house right now. No, flipping. Both you know, from the standpoint of how expensive they are. We don't know which, like it right. seems to be slowing down a little bit here right. in the Bay Area, right. but then you also have the expense of the repairs. Right, right. So I wouldn't be ashamed. I feel like you're a failure because you didn't catch the market at the peak. That's a mistake. Don't go there. Don't put your, don't put that on yourself because there's no way anybody could know. I don't know what's going to happen in the next five minutes, you know, in the next year, year. I mean, we, we've all been waiting for a long time for the market to get a little soft and all it does is get stronger. So who knows how long it'll yeah. go like that. I don't think it's, it's knowable. Um, uh, and you know, people say it's a bubble. I don't know that it's a bubble. I mean, it's, it doesn't feel like a bubble. It just feels like it's been, you know, um, going up a lot because of demand, supply and demand. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. so, okay. Question. We have a little housekeeping to do yeah. at the end of this show now, <laughs> right? Yeah, so um, we we have a new ebook out. It's called Evidence-Based Investing Insights. If you want to learn more about the science behind the way that we manage yep. investment portfolios here, it, that's a great primer. It is written to be plain English um, and for everybody. So I hope yep. that I there hope that's enjoyable. Right um, if you're if you're going to be listening to this, there's a Know Your Possibilities guide where if you want to take some notes, it would be a good place to start. Yep. Yeah, um, for future podcast listeners. And we do appreciate all of you that are watching live. It yeah. really me means a lot to us. We, uh, It's a great opportunity because you can actually submit questions live. Yeah, it's and, fun. You know, I see all your little being, laughter and yeah, loves that's great. and things. That's, that's great. So great. Yep, yep. Um, um, and, and then if you want to talk to us at, at any point, you can go to our website. You could call you could email um, on our website. There's also a tool where you could just schedule a meeting with right. us. Please take right it on our website. It's down by the podcast, right? 
So we uh, thank you so much for listening and watching, and we appreciate it. And um, just remember. <laughs> no, we'll be back. Uh, we'll be oh, yeah. here every two weeks Sorry. in your face. You cannot escape us anymore. <laughs> so 916 at noon, grab your lunch. We will be here yeah, in September all the live 16th. places. Right. Oh, and if you have if you have topics you want us to talk about, please submit them to us. Let us know. Give us a call. We love This one was actually submitted by a really good friend of ours and a client of ours um, who wanted us to take a deep dive into um, inflation. I hope we went deep enough for yeah, you. Yeah, I hope it wasn't too shallow in the shallow end. <laughs> but we're not, again, we weren't trying to make you into, you know, uh, uh, economists. Yeah, for sure. Okay. So thanks for joining us. Remember, you're invested. And so are we. Take care. Thanks very much. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.